Welcome to Flight Sim Alaska. I'm Dave, the armchair bush pilot. Today we're in Port Hyden, Alaska, and we are going to fly into the caldera of Antioch Chak Volcano to land in Surprise Lake. So give me a minute to get this aircraft off the ground and I'll come right back at you. So for those eagle-eyed folks who may happen to know a thing or two about uh, the Alaska Peninsula, you might notice that we are pointed to the west uh, overlooking Bristol Bay and the mountain, Antioch Chak Volcano, is behind us to the east. Um, the reason I took off this direction as opposed to going straight to the mountain is that I wanted to point some things out about Port Hyden, and it's already a fairly short video and there's just so much to say. Uh, I'm going to miss a ton of it and I apologize, but I want to try. Uh, to get as much as possible, so we're going to lengthen it by, by going west. And also, there's a couple of things I, I did want to point out visually over here. So again, this is Bristol Bay, Alaska, um, and uh, we're about 425 miles southwest of Anchorage, um, which is, again, Alaska's most populous city. Uh, the only way you're going to get out here is by aircraft. You could theoretically get out here by boat, but that's just not going to happen. Um, now, one of the main things I wanted to point out here is that this lagoon uh, is a has become recently, in 2019, uh, a casualty of coastal erosion and climate change. And coastal erosion is a major problem in Alaska, uh, all across this western Alaska, from, from this area all the way up into the Arctic. Uh, what happened was that right about there, I think, uh, the ocean finally breached that... Uh, that sandbank or whatever it was, and and, um, and the whole thing just came rushing out. Now, in this flight sim, I've repeatedly been talking about how, you know, the, the lakes are way above where they're supposed to be and so on, and there's an artifact, etc. That's not the case with this. That really is about 20 or 30 feet above sea level, and uh, that broke free and, and drained out. So I just wanted to point that out. Other things about Port Hyden here, it's a community of about 100 people. A little, little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Man, that looks pretty, doesn't it? Look at these, these little creeks here. This really, really looks fantastic throughout as we fly over. Um, the first time that Port Hyden appears in the U.S. Census is in 1880, about 40 people, and it actually cites uh, what's listed as Mashik, which is a village site, I think, along this Meshik River. And these days, that Mashik is recognized as Meshik. And I don't, I, I'm guessing it's just a. Uh, problem with the pronunci pronouncing that first vowel, um, you know, meshik, meshik, I, I suspect it's somewhere kind of in between, uh, you know, historically, or, or maybe it really just has changed. Um, man, this looks super cool. So a couple of other things, let's see, uh, this is the Aleutian chain or Aleutian range um, of mountains here. Uh, south of us, there's a ton of national parks and preserves and wildlife refuges and all that good stuff. So the Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge kind of starts about the middle, I think, of the Alaska Peninsula east-west-wise, and, and it's over here. Uh, where we're headed is towards the Antioch Chak Volcano and the Antioch Chak uh, National Monument. And on the other side of that, there's another national park, Antioch Chak uh, Wildlife Preserve or something like this. I actually have to look it up uh, again because there's so many of them. I've got like two maps I'm looking at right now. And not keeping good track of it. So let's see, what else can we say about Port Hyden? There's a ton of stuff that I could say, and I'm gonna miss a lot. Um, it's a predominantly a predominantly Alaska native village. About 83, 84% of people that live there uh, as of 2018 um, are Alaska native. Uh, studies or I guess ethnographies done in the early 1980s uh, have those folks identifying as Aleut. Um, Language-wise, they um, speak uh, Alutic, uh, sometimes called Pacific Yupik or Sukpik sometimes, and there's another word too that I'm not going to try to pronounce, and um, I've never even seen it anywhere, so I'm not sure how relevant that is. But that language is spoken uh, across the, the Alaska Peninsula in uh, the, the villages we call the Chignicks, <laughs> um, which is Chignik Bay, Lagoon, Lake, uh, and Perryville and then um, also in Nanwalik and Port Graham in Lower Cook Inlet, as well as Kodiak Islands. 
Um, I don't know that people these days are speaking it very widely. It's not, I don't think, a, a primary language for folks out here. Maybe some of the elders still, that was their first language. I think these days folks that do speak and understand these languages, uh, Alutic, that is a, that's a secondary language a lot of times for them. But it's a very important, and that's something to think about. As we fly around Alaska, like the language is, it's super duper important. They're, they're uh, traditional languages. Um, I can't. I, I almost can't even like really relate like how how important it is for folks to, to connect with that. So, uh, it's a subsistence village. Um, other historical stuff. I'll get to subsistence stuff in a second. Historical stuff. Uh, after World War II, it was uh, home to an air base, a military air base, uh, which stationed about 5,000 troops here for a while. I didn't really get a sense of how long that that uh, occurred for, but that's a common story along the Aleutian chain and all across Alaska. Um, having these these military bases, naval bases, air force bases, and so on, and we'll visit a lot of those places as we as we tour Alaska. Um, I didn't know that that was true for Port Hayden. Um, so, it uh, this place did um, attract Scandinavian fishermen for the cod fishery in the area. Um, I don't think that's a huge influence these days, and I knew that that kind of thing Scandinavian folks would come over here. Um, in southeast Alaska, certainly, I know Petersburg specifically has the Scandinavian influence, um, but I didn't know that it extended all the way over here, uh, which I thought that was interesting as I was looking that up. Um, commercial fishing is still a major, uh, major thing here. I, I want to say like a solid third of the community income is sourced from some kind of commercial fishing related activity, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, subsistence uh, users, so subsistence hunters and fishers, um, I find that's very uh, participation in commercial fishery is highly correlated to being able to be very productive subsistence hunters and fishers, and that's all economic. You've got to have money to hunt and fish. So thinking about that, um, this community is very active subsistence uh, area, so that is to say people living off of the land. Uh, salmon is, I think, the most important resource in terms of volume. However, I would call caribou the most, uh, air quotes I guess, important resource in the sense that it's the most widely used distributed resource, but it doesn't make up the lion's share of foods. It's, it's kind of down there. Now, in this area we used to have, in the early 1980s, we had about 20,000 caribou came through here. That would be the northern Alaska Peninsula herd. These days that herd is like in the 2000s maybe. The last number I, I could find from 2008, which is fairly old at this point, um, was around 2,000 caribou. Um, you also get moose in here as well. And then of course there's migratory birds and it's coastal, so we're having marine vertebrates. There's all these great things that people can live off the land out here. Uh, so that's kind of the picture for that. Um, you can kind of see here the, the textures feel fairly subdued. There's no trees really. I guess there's a few here and there spotty spotty looking uh, that's accurate this this climate here it's fairly difficult I think it's windy here uh, socked in frequently with fog um, th that kind of stuff I think it's a little drier uh, and that has to do with this this mountain range and you have prevailing prevailing winds from from the east into the west on the other side it's a different story it's like bigger trees and that kind of stuff um, so let's see, what else can we say here? There is so much. I'm just going to miss all kinds of stuff here. So again, this is the Antioch Czech volcano. You can get here uh, from uh, Port Hyden. It's about uh, 16 miles southeast of Port Hyden. Uh, I know that uh, you can get a four-wheeler most of the way out here and probably hike some of it. Um, I, I'm guessing people come out here to hunt and, and do subsistence activities. I'm not sure what, um, but my guess is this area is, is used. I don't know if you could come out here, like to Port Hyden and stay. I, I'm guessing there's a few lodges out here. Usually there are lodges and things like that near national parks and preserves and monuments and stuff because they do attract tourists. Um, but uh, so let me think, what else can we say about Antioch Czech? It's, uh, it is part of that Aleutian chain of volcanoes that uh, spans from that Mount Spur near Anchorage, uh, about 425 miles north, uh, north east of here. I think that's right. And um, 
and then all the way down to the, the very t tip of the Aleutian chain, which is that chain of islands that extends to the south um, southwest of Alaska uh, and North America. It just kind of trails out there for like 1,500 miles or something like that. Um, this is an active volcano. The last time it erupted was 1931. I didn't find a lot of information on that. I was kind of prioritizing some other stuff, and um, honestly, the other stuff was easier to find because I'm using the Alaska Department of Fish and Game uh, Division of Subsistence technical paper uh, series to uh, help inform some of what I'm talking about. Uh, they've got some great uh, ethnography that they've done over the last 40 years or so, and so it's a phenomenally important and interesting resource for folks uh, if you're interested in uh, Alaska and and um, the people here that is a really interesting uh, set of technical papers um, again this is actually fairly remote and so uh, you know a 1931 eruption in the Alaska Peninsula might just be really a footnote and, and you have to dig pretty deep to find uh, some seriously good information on on that I really feel like I'm off track somehow. I'm not sure how. I, every time I've come through here, I've actually done this at a much, with much more altitude. Oh yeah, I'm pretty low. And so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit um, disoriented right now, to be honest. So this whole area, um, you know, we're just now starting to see trees. That whole area there is all flat, and, and that's true. I think I said that. Um, you know that's really what you'd expect to see and that's all down to climate and of the area and this um these trees here i don't know if that's accurate but i tend to think it is and so all this snow is probably a springtime thing um otherwise you you wouldn't have these trees here this is uh, an ice-free caldera and unlike which is unlike that mount spur and if you didn't see that video that took us from uh kenai um, to Lime Village via Merrill Pass. Go check that out. It's pretty interesting. We do fly past Mount Spur and we talk about that a little bit. That one definitely is, a, is an iced up caldera. This one is not. And actually, I suspect even these peaks are, are generally ice free with the exception of maybe a little bit of snowpack that kind of lingers through the, through the summer months uh, occasionally or, or maybe frequently. So we're kind of going to make our way through this pass here into the caldera. Surprise Lake is where we're headed. It's on the can't see it, it's on the other side of this ridge, and actually up against that ridge on the other side of the caldera. And this mountain here, I think, uh, is the nearest volcano to us off to the north, and that's Yantarni, I think. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Um, seems like kind of a funny, funny name. But these volcanoes all have crazy different names. I mean, we've got Mount Spur, and then we have uh, Antioch Chak, and then we've got Neontarni, and there's another one that I can't even pronounce. It's a little further north. We'll talk about that when we do the Chignicks. But, um, yeah, it just feels like a mixed bag. Some Russian names, definitely some English stuff going on in there. Um, some some uh, local Lutic kind of names, and I don't know if they're authentic or sort of anglicized or uh, maybe anglicized by way of Russian, as it, as it were. And so anyways, so here we're passing into the caldera of the volcano. It's about six, a little shy of six and a quarter miles across. This uh, thing right here is a vent. Um, it's actually got its own little bitty caldera up there. You can fly over that and check that out. That there is Vent Mountain. It's about 1,400 feet above the, uh, the caldera floor. It's, it's a height. Um, and we are headed towards Surprise Lake, which is about two about two miles um, from east to west. And that drains through a fissure in the caldera wall. And over there you can kind of see it. And that's the uh, Anyak Chak River, which flows into the Gulf of Alaska on uh, off to the east, which we cannot see from here. And I came in too low to really show it off. So I think this looks really good in here as we're flying over like I'm climbing and I should be doing the other thing right now. But I think this looks really good in here. This was one of the very firstest places I came to in the flight simulator. A friend who's a, who's a pilot, um, has a little airplane and flies around Alaska, uh, turned me on to this place. And, uh, you know, I knew the flight simulator was going to be pretty cool and we'd see some neat stuff. 
uh, what I didn't expect was to be able to have somebody tell me like, oh, hey, cool, check this out. It's pretty neat in real life. And then actually be able to go there and do it. And so when I came here, this is actually what gave me the idea for this channel was um, like if I can come here to a place that's just obscure and remote and it look pretty good, uh, then what else could I show off in Alaska to other people? Um, and so, so that's that's why we're here. Is is really uh, has to do with with this. And I've been really excited to show show people this for um, for a long time. Uh, and I had this idea I was going to do a circuit of Alaska, starting in Anchorage and kind of working my way down the Cook Inlet and so on. And I, I've kind of started to realize that um, there's a lot of long flights uh, between here and there and. Um, and I kind of feel like I need to break things up with, with maybe some long videos and maybe some short videos in between so that it's not all, you know, two hour long videos and then occasionally these, these short 15 minute jobs. Um, so that that's kind of the thinking here. So I'll probably bounce around a little bit, but generally sort of stick to that, that circuit of Alaska as much as possible. And I've done this uh, landing I don't know, more times than I can count now. The first couple times I did it, it was just a real mess because uh, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I still don't, um, but I can usually get things on the ground now. So that's helpful. Uh, and uh, But the last couple of times I've done this, it's, whew, look at that. Man, that's cool. Um, last couple of times I've done this, it's it's been a mess because I've been so busy talking that I've neglected to land the aircraft properly. And, you know, water landing should generally be straightforward and, and I don't want to call it easy in the flight simulator, but uh, you don't have to line up on a runway and um, you just, you got this giant lake, you just got to kind of get close and make sure you're coming in fairly level. Oh, this looks so good. Really, this is just what I wanted to show you, is just coming into this lake here. and You can imagine what this must look like in real life. Um, you know, probably much, much more rugged. I mean, I've been saying that throughout the simulator, of course. These little clusters of probably black spruce trees is my guess. Um, you know, little Dr. Seuss trees, we sometimes we sometimes like to call them because they're just spindly little things with, with tufts of, of, you know, branches that kind of stick out. Uh, I don't really know what grows down here, but that's my guess is just these stubby stubby spruces is the most likely likely scenario here. Yeah, this is just really neat. I wish that river looked a little bit better. Yeah, this is super cool. Again, I think this is a pretty pretty springtime vibe going on here. I expect in this in the the middle of summer, let's say solstice, that most of the snow wouldn't be here. But I think it's a really cool look. Um, I really do like how it looks in the springtime in Alaska when you've got the the melting snow um, like this. It's a lot of, um, I don't know, just, yeah, I think it just looks good. I'm trying to concentrate on landing here. Almost there. Almost there. Let's try not to stall. There we go. Oh, I think we got this one. Ah, oh, cool. That was not super duper terrible. So here we are in Surprise Lake in Aniak Chak Volcano, Aniak Chak Crater that is, just 16 miles um, southeast of the community of Port Hyden. Um, if you liked this video, uh, hit that like button. If you want to see more of these, hit subscribe. I'm gonna keep making them uh, as much as I can. Um, and if you wanna know when they're coming out, hit that, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Uh, otherwise, I had a great time uh, doing this video and hanging out with you. Um, thank you so very much, and I will see you in the next video.